Hey guys, how's it going? So I've uh, gotten a number of questions in a lot of videos I've made about crampons asking me about where micro spikes fit into the mix. And um, pretty much everyone knows what micro spikes are. That's these things right here. This is like a version of them. Uh, I don't really use these things that much. As you can tell, they look pretty nice and clean. Um, but actually, when I worked at a Crystal, a ski resort, they would give us a pair of these like every year. So I got like a bunch of free micro spikes. Um, and micro spikes also are kind of like the catch-all name. There are other brands like Trail Crampons and uh, All Tracks, I think. Um, but they all kind of fall under the veil of micro spikes. And uh, basically, you know, the idea with that is it, it's supposed to give your foot a bit more traction when you're in a slippery environment. And so what is the bridge between micro spikes and crampons, right? I've even had clients show up for mountaineering trips and they've asked me about why they can't use their micro spikes and why they have to bring these crampons along. All right, so let me briefly talk about the spectrum of crampons and then I can talk a little bit more about how micro spikes fit in. Okay, so here's the first example I got. Take a look at these. This is a fully aluminum string type crampon. And uh, a lot of people will actually put these on approach shoes and stuff like that. Uh, but mostly for glacier walking, not any sort of real climbing with crampons, especially with aluminum ones right here. These things are meant to prioritize light weightness and uh, moving over maybe just like a glacier or some sort of easy, snowy, and a very light amount of ice terrain. Any sort of aluminum crampons on rock will wear out super fast. And there's kind of like a special way to wrap these on your shoes in order to keep them centered. But this is about as lightweight as real crampons can get. I also put these on ski boots a lot. These are mostly used for snow climbing when you have good purchase on your foot and not so much for miles of hard blue ice walking. The next step up here, this is a fully steel crampon. And this has a front bail and a back bail and then obviously a little strap right here. Um, this crampon can fit on any footwear, any sort of mountain boot. So uh, if you have like even a robust hiking boot, you could put this on. Um, but a full shank, three quarter shank mountaineering boot, this thing will totally be accepted by that. All these points right here are steel, so they will take a beating. But none of these points are really made for specific real water ice climbing. Like when they're fat like this, they're meant more about surface area and for snow climbing. Uh, this is a good crampon if you're doing general mountaineering like uh, the Emmons on Rainier or the DC, if you're doing the Mountaineers route on Whitney, uh, if you're on Baker just walking uphill. Uh, general mountaineering crampons, really great. They fit with any boot, boot uh, mountaineering boot. And I can also put this into a standard like hiking shoe. So here's kind of like my hiking shoe of choice. This is um, not a mountain boot at all. It does have um, a bit of climbing rubber there so I can climb with them a little bit, but it's a fully flexible high top approach hiking boot sort of thing. And I would use this for a number of mountaineering objectives for sure. And uh, usually I like to slap the heel in first. These crampons are not at all sized for this shoe. In fact, they're sized for my double boots currently but that would be a good footwear combo with this crampon. Moving up one step, this is the old one with the back bail and then the toe bail. Now I have a crampon with a toe bail, bail and a back lever. That's what I'm gonna call them. That's not the exact names, but just so you guys know. Uh, and then you can also see some other differences. Looking at the teeth, so the teeth are still that wide flat sort of um, deal for more snow climbing rather than ice climbing. But you can just barely see the tip right here has been sharpened. So they did make this a bit sharper and um, so that way you could climb a little bit more. These crampons I've actually used to climb quite a bit of really low easy ice like WI2 wearing my three quarter shank boots. 
The easiest example I can think of is um, Mount Shucks in the Fisher Chimneys climbing Winnie Slide, which most oftentimes is steep snow, but uh, it late in the season, it can become more of like steep blue ice. And I've climbed it a ton of times with this cramp on. You can also see that the secondary points, that's these ones right here, have some serration to it. And so that, and these are actually pretty pointy, but that is for once you engage those secondary points, you get more stability. And that's really what you do when you're true ice climbing is you stab in the front points enough so that way these secondary points engage. And so they've added a bit more of a serrated secondary point as opposed to the more walking style cramp on. And that's just to help you with your climbing. Another huge difference, right, is this toe bail in the, or this uh, heel lever in the back right here. That's for getting better heel holds so that way you can climb a bit better. So a good boot that I would pair with these crampons are these Scarpa Rebel Tech. This is a three quarter shank boot, so it doesn't flex from the heel to the ball of the foot, but then the toe flexes a little bit. These boots are actually really awesome, by the way. And the way how I stick these on is you slot the toe in, and then you have the heel posts. Oh, it looks like this crampon's actually sized for this boot. Ugh. And then the deal with the three quarter shank boots is they actually have this lever in the back right here. So that way if I snap <laughs> the heel piece on, you see how that heel lever connects with the heel bail. And now this boot is ready to go um, for, you know, light ice climbing like WI2. I really wouldn't take this on WI3. I would switch to a more, you know, real life climbing setup, but this um, setup is a great all mountain boot. So if you're doing something that involves steep snow traverses, steep, a little bit of low angle ice, and then glacier walking to a rock climb of some sort where you're gonna stay with these boots, this is a great setup right here. The final example I'm gonna show you guys is the full automatic cramp on. This is where instead of the plastic front and uh, heel bail, you have a, a front toe bail and then the heel clip. And uh, you can also see a huge difference in the teeth of the crampon. So each point right here is made like a little ice ax. And that's because these crampons are for full on water ice climbing. If I go back to the absolute most basic crampons, you can see how these things flex quite a bit. All crampons go in and out, but you see how these things flex a bit. So that isn't good for climbing. It's totally fine for walking and it helps save on, you know, materials. But when I pull out these crampons, there is a little bit of play in there, but not nearly as much. And this center bar is a lot more sturdy. It's made out of more beefy materials. There's a huge weight difference between that crampon there and this crampon. And then there's a really huge weight difference between this crampon and this crampon but this is the last thing you want to ice climb in. When you're ice climbing, you're really using these things as a solid platform. So you need a full automatic cramp on. You can either have one point or you can have two. The secondary points, you can see every point on this cramp on is really kind of built for power and no mercy. Really good penetration in the ice. You can see how um, for this one is. So the boot that I would choose for this cramp on would be the Scarpa Phantom Tech. Full shank boot, so it, no flex from tip to tail. And then you can see how the toe has a toe welt, and then there's a heel welt. So that's how you know it's pretty much a full shank boot. This thing slots in like so. You can uh, line up the heel post. And then this is a full on water ice climbing setup right here. So, uh, I have different videos that talk about how to size crampons for your boots, so I'm not going to talk about that. But that's just to give you a little bit of an idea of matching crampons to boots. And uh, where do micro spikes come in? So if I chuck those things down, back to the micro spikes. Micro spikes actually have very specific purposes, and they're not as versatile as people might think. Uh, and that's mostly because these things work best on flat icy ground. So it's like, when would I use those is when, well, generally walking across the parking lot on my way to wherever. 
So in general, I can think like ice climbing, if we just wanna go on the approach and we don't want to pull out our crampons because that just wears down the crampons a whole lot. So if I'm on the approach to my ice crag and it's icy out and I'm walking across dirt and rocks and whatever, instead of doling out my crampons and making those like super um, worn out, I can throw these micro spikes on my boots right here. The stretch works so that way just about any boot can fit one of these things and it helps save a lot of wear on my nice expensive crampons. If I break these, it doesn't matter. A lot of people will also pull them out during spring snow conditions. I'd say in the morning when the snow is quite icy, uh, they can do your job. But the minute that the snow gets soft, then the crampon, the micro spikes aren't really doing much. And you know, everything has limitations, right? If you're on a through hike, it makes sense to bring a trail runner for that. But if you just wanna avoid slipping around, you can throw on the micro spikes. Something's better than nothing, but you can't really count on them to completely change your footwear. So I think micro spikes are really there for walking across dirt and rough terrain, but they're not really there for allowing you to climb steeper snow. And they're definitely not there to allow you to climb steeper ice. You need actual crampons for that. And that's why I showed you those other versions of crampons. So that way you have those as an option too. If you're just a hiker and you wanna go out and experience the outdoors in spring, I would have a pair of micro spikes, but then it may not be bad to have in your quiver some sort of pair of real crampons. These ones, for example, these can work for any shoe. They're a lot less comfortable because I often find that if I'm in a normal shoe, these front posts get in the way. So maybe going and checking out like the Catula. Um, Catula makes a pair of actual crampons that fit onto boots pretty well. But um, having something like this in your back pocket could be easier when you actually have real snow to traverse or like real ice uh, because it, those spikes going in just help hold your foot to the mountain so much better. There are other tricks you can do, like in the spring, if you just wait for the sun to hit the snow for a few hours, it gets softer, and then you can kind of slide down the snow or actually have foot perches. A big issue sometimes can be when you're trying to traverse a large snow slope while it's icy out, and then you're depending on your micro spikes to hold you there, but chances are they're not going to hold you to the mountain. You can't depend on these things to make your shoes into all-terrain vehicles. A big part of it is your footwear selection. If I was hiking in the middle of spring, I might choose a stiffer, this is pretty stiff, approach shoe style boot. This, is, this isn't really a hiking boot, but it's not, um, not just like a flimsy trail runner either. I'd say that this is a very nice hiking boot. You can see how stiff it is. This is made to be walking in the mountains but it's not super heavy. If you're walking through snow anyway, it's nicer to have a bit more footwear. And by having that extended cuff, it gives you a little bit more torsional stability. So this with a pair of micro spikes will be better than your trail runner with a pair of micro spikes. So kind of matching your footwear for the train that you're gonna have. I would not hesitate to bring this out on spring snow if I'm just crossing a few snow fields on some sort of spring hike. If, for those of you who are just hikers, you can stay away from the like the true mountaineering boots that are like three quarter shank, unless you are going mountaineering, um, or if you're going out in the winter time snowshoeing or whatever. Uh, but this is a little overkill for people that are looking for micro spike terrain. This is more a full cramp on terrain. So if you are going to go real mountaineering on glaciers, that's when you want to bump up to a boot like this. So in summary, yes, I do use micro spikes, mostly on approaches to ice climbs when, um, you know, it's like super icy out and I don't, but it's not icy enough to put crampons on when it's like a mixture of dirt, rock, ice, and I want a little bit more grip, but I don't want to ruin my nice crampons. That's what micro spikes are used for. Or if it's a spring hike, it, I mean, in all reality, it could be a summer hike as well, but, uh, sort of a hike that has a bit firmer snow that I can't kick in well, that's where these things could quite uh, be useful. I'll also say they make a bunch of different styles. These are just the chain micro spikes. 
but they also have ones that um, have little like cleats in them, I'd say. They have like runner micro spikes, which are generally a lot smaller and lighter. And then kind of like the four by four micro spikes, which had those spikes in there. This one's more of a mid ground, like cheap, whatever I got for free sort of thing. Hopefully that helps kind of see the relationship. You could think about it like your first step is nothing. Second step would be micro spikes. Third step is a light pair of crampons. And then it goes into, you know, heavy crampons all the way up to water ice climbing when you have the most burly steel, like heavy crampons you can possibly have is like dry tooling and water ice. Uh, but for those of you who just want advice for hiking and uh, how, where micro spikes versus crampons come in, that is a little bit of guidelines for you. So if you guys like my video, feel free to subscribe for more that's coming up. You can also hit the bell notification for any more. Uh, you can go onto my website if you want to book me for a trip. I do trips all over the Sierra. So if you want to do climbing, skiing, hiking, backpacking, I'll, t I'll take you backpacking, sure. Um, but any of those sort of deals in California, then you can hit me up. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram. If you would like to support my channel, you can either subscribe, which is the easy free way, or you can check out my Patreon and uh, donate that way. But I just wanted to say thank you guys for all of your support, and I will see you in the next one.